Hello, welcome to another adventure with Stringman Guitars. I'm Vic. We just got something new in the mail. Let's see what it is. We've got a big brown box. Something tells me it's a guitar. Let's take a look. Alright, just in time for the train to come. Ah, I missed. Let's see what's in the box. Paper. Paper is in the box. Ah, Gibson. Let's see what we have. Ah, something else. Got a pack of Ernie Ball 1046s. It's a Gibson Fragili. Okay, we have it out of the box or out of the big box. Let's open this up. That's what's supposed to be in here. Let's open the box. Put away the knife. Okay, we're going for the reveal. Ah, oh, they sent me bubble wrap. Ah! They sent me a... Looks like a gig bag. Sorry for not keeping it in focus. We have a gig bag. It's a Gibson gig bag. We're going to take it downstairs and see what's in it. Alright, we're in the underground lair. We've got our Gibson gig bag on, on the bench here. It appears that there's some marks from, I guess, the case candy that this comes in. Rubbing against the cardboard. See what's in here. Aha. Case candy. It was inspected by RP Elliot on August of 13. There's our serial number and so on and so forth. Alright, so we got that. Anything else in here? Nothing else. Uh, in the bag here, it's a Ziploc bag. Hold on one second, I'm going to put this on my little tripod. Hold on. Okay, white inspection gloves. Because it is new, usually the only thing I have in here is used, used, uh, broken, in need of help guitars. Now we got a charger that's probably for the Mini E-Tune and various overseas adapters. The Mini E-Tune Quick Start Guide. The gear tone strings that are four years old. The owner's manual. Truss rod wrench slash 
screwdriver and a Gibson gold warranty. Alright, that's enough of that. Let's see what's in the bag. Let's get ready for the reveal. This is nice. We has ourselves a SG Future. Let's go ahead and zoom over it real quick. Let you see it. Got zebra humbuckers. Got the mother of pearl inlays. Futuristic future headstock with your tribute style tuning knobs. And then if we flip it over, hold on one second. A strap button and there we have the e-tune okay so we're gonna figure out how to make this e-tune tune and I was noticing as I flipped this over that the the frets are a little bit sharp so they're gonna have to be I mean it's been sitting in a box for four years so they're gonna have to be cleaned up a little bit but it's a pretty nice guitar we'll have to get to measuring and I want to make sure this is set up all Look at that. Beautiful. Not touched since it left the factory. Nice shot of the floor there, by the way. Alright, I'll be back shortly. Okay, we're back. We've taken the strings off, the four-year-old strings. And we've gone over and got rid of the really really sharp fret ends because after all it was sitting in the box for four years got rid of the Gibson strings because once again they were sitting on a guitar for four years this is one beautiful guitar we're going to get finished up with it and uh, polish the frets because once again it's been sitting for four years. I'm going to polish the frets and as you can see compared to the earlier video the um, fingerboard we put some oil on it and I'm probably going to do that again just because it's so thirsty. I'll be back shortly. Okay some annoying noise but what we're doing is we got all these um, these uh, sharp fret ends taken care of, and now I want to polish the the, uh, the frets up. And I'm starting with some 320 paper wrapped around a little piece of rubber, basically the back of some flooring, and I got everything taped off to to protect the body. And I just want to start, I'll go with 320, I'll jump up to 400, I'll do 600, and basically I'm just going to flap this back and forth. Like this here. It's fairly rigid, but it's not taking a lot of 
Ontario off. It's just taking some of the uh, some of the oxidation off without taking the crown off or anything. Okay, well, we've got the frets polished up to 2,000, and I figure I'd just use the old Stumac, give them a plug, fret eraser, just to give it a final touch, and then I'll probably hit it with some 4 out steel wool. See you in a minute again. As you can see, we have polished our frets, oiled the fingerboard, now we're getting ready to put on the strings. This is going to be a beautiful guitar when we're done with it. Taken from Mothballs 2014, it's going to play like it just came off of the Gibson bench. Alright, she's tuned. I'm going to show you the Mini E-Tune Robotic Tuners. They're locking. What you do here is you put the, th you make sure that the, uh, there's a, lot, a notch on either side. Notch on either side. You want them parallel. Each one of them parallel. You put your string through once and then there's a second level. You put it up through the second level. You grab this little cap and you turn it down until it's tight. Do it to every one of them except for these three. You wrap them two times or three times on the top. So that you can see how this thing works. We are going to turn it on. It's a little out of tune right now. So we're you turn it on, strum the strings, and you'll see the tuners do what they do. Keep on looking. When they turn all green and they flash, Holding on my bread, my bench. There we go. trying. There we are. That is mini E-Tune. The guitar is now in tune. Of course they're new strings so there's going to be some stretching that goes on. Alright it's time to do some tightening of the locking tuners and um, doing a set up on it. Believe it or not, Gibson with all their technology with these mini e-tuners they say don't use a screwdriver don't use any kind of wrench but use a penny and upon further inspection There's a slot on the top which is cut out for an actual actual penny. So maybe it's not a bad idea. So let me go through and finish tightening these up. Don't want to overdo it because you don't want to snap any strings. You can get them pretty tight just by, 
you know, finger pressure. But if you don't want to have any slippage, yeah, use a penny. Like I said, it fits right in there. You feel it seat. Okay, we're all tight. Okay. We're going to do the mini e tune set overnight. Turn her on. Flashes that everything is red. So, strum it. Wait for everything to turn green. Okay, we're in tune. Now let's check ourselves some some specs here. It looks like what Gibson wants. They really don't tell you what they want for the um, string height at the um, at the nut on our first fret. Um, but anywhere between 18 and 22 is fine. I'm going to start with 18 and see what we get. And 18 just barely snugs through there as does it there. So that's good. Usually don't have to move it all that much. I'll take the 12 again in the playing position. Hold down on the last fret. Looking at the seventh fret. Eh, not quite there. So my my order of doing the setup is check the string height at the nut, check the relief, do your intonation, oh, I'm sorry, string height at the twelfth, do your intonation, and then finally pick up height. Should pretty much all fall into place. So we're going to give this one little more turn here. That should do what we wanted it to do. I'm not going to bother retuning it because I think it's still within reason for the measurement. Okay, I got a 12. And that's just barely fitting in there. If I stick the 10. It's sitting right at about 11 right now. So, we're happy with that. We want to check the string height. Gibson wants at the 12th fret, we want five one thousandths. And I've got five. I'm sorry, they want six one thousandths. I'm sitting at about five one thousandths. I'm going to raise the bridge just a hair. Six, 
664, so I'm sorry. And they want 464, so I'm not on the high E side, and we are sitting there. So we've got the string height right, we've got the um, relief right. Let's throw it into two one more time. There we are. All right. So we have our string height at the nut, we have our relief, and we have our string height at the twelfth. Now we're going to check intonation. And I'm going to switch the camera over to the other side so that you can see what we're doing there. All right. We have our all of our sync string heights are correct. Now we're going to adjust the um, pickup heights. And we're going to need the right. Screw machine to do that. So they Gibson wants um, Six sixty fourths on the heavy side, and they want four sixty fourths on the high or the uh, treble side. So let's just crank that down a little bit. Going the wrong way, Vic. And we're 464 there. Let's try the uh, the bridge side or the um the bridge pickup and you're too high there okay we're there let's try the Treble side were too high. Almost.
up if I was holding down the right string. It's one of them days. Boom, right there. Okay, now intonation. You want to do it whenever the guitar is. Up. You want to make sure that the guitar is in playing position. And we're going to turn on our tuner. Pluck the first string. Get a better angle for you guys. By the way, the um, E-Tune system, you can operate manually. Now the E-Strings, spot on. A-String is good. on so I guess whenever Gibson set this up at the shop and we took care of the uh, bow in the neck from sitting for 14 or four years eh, that one's that's a little sharp can't win them all so sharp means it is that the string is too long, so we have to move the bridge that way. Or the saddle, I should say, that way. And also, always makes you retune. Let's start on. Now we are ready to sell it to some lucky person who's going to get a brand new 2013 Gibson SG Future with Mini E Tune after. It's been fixed from shriveling up in the dry warehouse and uh, the pickup height not being set right. Um, I love the Mini E-Tune. Uh, if you like me, like us, and uh, on, on um, YouTube, check us out at Stringman Guitars on uh, the Facebook. 
that'd be great. And um, we're gonna go ahead and um, list thing, list this thing, and get uh, get it out of the shop. It's been a joy to work for, work on. And uh, now someone's gonna get one that will play right whenever they open it up at their house. Peace. Have a great day. See you at the next video.